So in lesson 3.8, we're going to be thinking about the relationships that we have with our ordered pairs. Remember in the last lesson we learned about ordered pairs and they are our x and y axis, our locations, in our four quadrants and we get there by running first and then jumping either up or down. Once again, forward on the coordinate plane is positive, backward is negative for x axis and for them for y, up is positive and down is negative. But now we're going to be looking more closely at the relationship that these numbers are going to have in these different quadrants. So one of the first things that we look at is the actual quadrant itself. So as I mentioned in the last video, we have four different numbers and they go instead of in a clockwise direction that we normally think of things happening in, they go in a counterclockwise direction. So in all of the quadrant one numbers or coordinate pairs are going to be positive number on the X and a positive number on the Y. When I go to coordinate two, if I go backwards on my X, that's my negative. So all of these ordered pairs will always be a negative X and a positive Y. For three, going backwards and down will always give me a negative followed by a negative. And then when I end up in four, which is directly below the one, then I'm going forward again for positive and down for negative. So all of those ordered pairs are always going to be shown as a positive negative. So when we look at some of the questions that we start with, we're going to make sure that we follow along, take our notes, write down what, I had, what I'm showing you up here on the board. So I've just inserted this so you can look at it over here. Same image as down here other than I actually have the pairings of positive positive for one, negative positive for two, the negative negatives for three, and the positive negative for four. So the question says, it says to examine the x coordinate. If I have this ordered pair of negative three positive four, think that the x coordinate is what? So the point is blank units to the blank of the origin. So my x coordinate, my x coordinate is negative three. So it's negative three. So that point is three units to the left of the origin. The origin, once again, is right in the center. Right in the center, the ordered pair of zero, zero. I don't go forward and I don't go backwards. So since the point to the left of the origin it must be located in which two possible coordinates. So if I'm at my point of origin, I'm going left, it either has to be in quadrant two or quadrant three. Now some of you are thinking, I wonder if I could just write a two and a three. Well, now mathematically, when we do coordinate planes, we use Roman numerals for these four quadrants. So it really needs to be a Roman numeral two, which is two eyes, and a Roman numeral three, which is me, or three eyes. When I go to step two then, it says now think about the same coordinate, but I want to look at the y. The y coordinate is positive four. So that point is four units. Would that be up or down? What's well, going to be up, since it's positive, up from the origin. So I know if I went over to the left, and it had to be in two or three, but then I went up, then I'm talking about quadrant two. So then we're gonna get into some math terms that we haven't talked about as of this point. Um, but things that I'm thinking that you've already learned or have talked about in previous years. The first math term that we have is a line of symmetry. And a line of sim symmetry just simply means the line where an image is divided to make it symmetrical. So like on this triangle, when I divide it going vertically, I have an identical side on the other side of the line. There's all sorts of different shapes that we can look at that have lines of symmetry. 
um, you've been making hearts since you were a little kid in preschool and cutting them out of paper. You fold the paper in half and then you make a half of heart. Well, that fold is your line of symmetry. In the same way, if this was paper and I folded it, I'd have the same rectangles. Or if I folded the star and cut it out, I could unfold it. So my line of symmetry divides it in half. There are many things in nature that are symmetrical. Butterflies are one of those things that are always symmetrical. When I put the two wings and lay them out, I'm always going to see that the dots are in the exact same location. And the folds and the creases are designed the same way. Also, Batman's symbol is symmetrical as well. When I talk about symmetry, I can also talk about being multiple forms of symmetry. I could have a horizontal and a vertical for symmetry, but notice on these shapes I have multiple ways that I can have symmetry. I have the vertical, I have the horizontal, I also have diagonals. So some shapes can have multiple lines of symmetry. The other word we're going to talk about today is reflection. And a reflection is something you've talked about or known about your entire life ever since you first saw yourself in a mirror. It's just simply mirroring the image that's there. Like this tree being mirrored in a lake. Or this cat actually being reflected in a mirror. His reflection is the opposite of the way it would look. So when we're talking about things being mirrored, we're talking about an opposite image. When it talks to coordinate planes, then I notice that my y-axis here has images on the opposite side. If I would count the perimeter all the way around, I would see that the perimeters are the exact same. If I counted or if I multiplied to find the area, I would see that the areas are the exact same. So these are the exact same shapes, but the only difference is, is that they are mirrored because they go in the opposite direction. Notice that they point in towards the line of axis. Or in these two triangles, they're going to be mirrored below the x-axis, but across from the y-axis. Notice that they point in opposite directions. So they are a reflection of one another. So that's what we got to think about when we're taking these notes and writing this down is, well, what does it mean to be reflected? And therefore, where would it be on the opposite side? And which line would it be opposite of? So first it says to identify the lines of symmetry in the rectangle. So the rectangle is the red shape on the coordinate plane. The blank axis is a horizontal line of symmetry, and the blank axis is a vertical line of symmetry. That's just checking to, to make sure that you remember which axis is which. Horizontal is my x-axis. It goes across. My y-axis, the leg of it goes up and down, just like the vertical line. So it says look at points A and B. So we're talking about here and here. What do you notice about the X coordinates? What do you notice about the Y coordinates? So as you're looking at it and you're studying them, I should be able to see, well I've got an ordered pair of 5, 4 and a 5, negative 4. Those are the same digits. So we can notice that we have the same digits that are being used for X and Y in both of those core, both of those sets, but that my Ys are going to be opposite. So take a moment and write that down. We notice the same digits are used for X and Y, but the Ys are opposites. So when I go to the second one, point B, it says, B is a reflection of point A across which axis, and how do you know? So when I go to B, I know that I'm going across which axis? Well, I'm not traveling anywhere across the Y. So my reflection line, or my, <coughs> excuse me, my reflection line is going to be my X axis. It reflects across the X axis, because it's on the opposite side of it. It's not at the top, it's at the bottom. They're the same distance. I went four up, so when I went to the x-axis, I went four down. Both of them are still five away from the y. 
So write that one down as well. It reflects across the x-axis because it's on the opposite side of it. The next question is then, I just put the image back there in that corner so you can see it. But this one then says, well now look at points A and D. What do you notice about the X coordinates? What do you notice about the Y coordinates? So now we're focusing in on two different ones. Now two of them that are at the top. And when I look at those, I see, well, I still have five and four in the same order, but on the D I have a negative four, five, and on the A I have a positive five. So it's very similar to A and B. It's still the same digits, but this time, the X's are going to be opposites. I have the negative 5 on D, I have the positive 5 on A. Same digits, but the X's are opposites. So point D is a reflection of point A across which axis, and how do you know? Well, I'm still at the same height, so I know that my height hasn't changed, but I went forward and I went backwards so I had to cross that center axis. So I know that it reflects across the y-axis because it's on the opposite side of it. Wherever my axis, axis is that I cross, that's going to be my axis of reflection. On this one it says which point is a reflection of point B across the x and then the y-axis. So you've got to start at B, and it says that I'm going to cross the x-axis and cross the y-axis. So I know I'm going to have to go up to cross the x-axis, and then I'm going to have to go over to cross the y-axis. I could have gone over first and crossed y, and then up to cross the X. Notice both times I end up in the same location. So which point going up and left, that tells me that it's point D. And the last one says to compare the coordinates of point B with the coordinates of point D. So once again, we're talking about B and D. And when I look at those, I still have five and four, but notice I have a positive five and a negative five. I have a positive 4 and a negative 4. So on that one, when I look at them and they are diagonally opposites for one another, or diagonal reflections because it crosses both lines of axis, then I have the same digits again, but this time, both the Y and the X are opposites of one another. So now we're going to stop and think what we've talked about. We've talked about symmetry. We've talked about reflections. We've talked about the X and Y axis. We've talked about four coordinates, one, two, three, and four. And we've talked about those ordered pairs and how they relate to one another. So focus on what we're doing, follow along. At any time, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video, rewind if you missed it. If you lose your focus, rewind and then go forward again. Be sure that you're taking your notes, writing it down so that you get that muscle memory going through and you're active, being an active learner. So we're going to start with identifying the coordinate where the point is located. So if I had a coordinate on this page, it would really help. You can flip back and forth on your book, but I want to help you out and just put one there for you. Anyway. So it says identify the quadrant where the point is located. So I have a positive number followed by a negative number. So I could learn that my positive negatives are always in quadrant four. Or I could just plot it. I can move forward two and down five and see that I am indeed in quadrant four. So to graph the point, you first move to the right, because I'm running forward from the origin, and then I move down because my negative five on my y-axis tells me to jump down, so I know I'm in quadrant four, capital I and capital V. 
for 2, it's a positive 4, positive 1. And I could learn that all of my positive positives are quadrant 1. Just like the opposite, all my negative negatives are quadrant 3. Or I could plot it. I could go forward 4, because I have to run first, and then jump up 1 and see that I am indeed in quadrant 1. I can learn on for 3 that all of my negative negatives are always going to be quadrant 3. Or I could just plot it. I'm going negative 6, negative 2. My first number is my x. I have to run first. So I would run backwards. I don't have enough numbers. But I do know that there's going to be a negative 6 that comes after my negative 5. That can't stop me from figuring out which quadrant I'm going to be in. And then when I jump down, because my next one is my y, and it always tells me to go up or down, negative going down, I can see that I am indeed in quadrant 3. All negative positives are going to be in quadrant 2. But if I plot it, same idea. I run out of numbers going backwards when I run to my negative 7. But I know it's going to be out there because numbers always continue. And then when I jump up 3, because it's my y, I do see that it is indeed in quadrant 2. Positive, positive, once again, are always going to be quadrant 1. But if I plot it, then I'm going to run forward 8. And then my second number tells me to jump up 8. I am indeed going to be in quadrant 1. So where is number 6 going to be? So you either looked and you saw, well, it's going to be a positive negative, And all positive negatives are going to be in quadrant 4. Or you went ahead and plotted it forward one because it tells me to run forward and then you jump down one because it's a negative and it told you to go down and you wrote down that it is in the quadrant four. So on these next one it says the two points are reflections of each other across the x or y axis. Identify the axis. Now there, there are certain ways that we can do this. We can plot both of them and figure out which one across. Or I'm going to give you a hint. Think about kids that can't get along. Okay? Brothers and sisters every once in a while fight. Some brothers or sisters stay put. So when I look at this young lady, she is not willing to get off of this little tricycle, even though the little boy wants to be on it. She's staying where she is. He's moving. She's the point of axis. Whichever axis stays the same, the one that moves is not going to be my point of axis because it's going somewhere else. So when I look at these, what that means is if it stays the same, that is my axis of reflection. So my y's stay the same. They're both positive 3. So my y axis has to be the same. Well, what if you don't understand that? Well, if you don't understand that, let's plot them. We have a negative 1, positive 3. So I know I'm going to run backwards 1, and then I'm going to jump up 3. That puts me in quadrant 2. And then I have a positive 1, positive 3, so I'm going to run forward 1, and I'm going to jump up 3. So I have a reflection. Same distance both directions, same height in both directions. The line that it crosses is going to be my reflection axis. So my y is indeed my reflection axis. So when I have positive 4, positive 4, and positive 4, negative 4, which one stays the same? Well, on that one, I have my x that is staying the same. It's going to be my axis of, re axis of reflection. If I need to plot it, then I can do positive 4, positive 4, running forward 4, jumping up 4, and then I can do positive 4, negative 4, which puts me in quadrant 4, because I run forward 4, and I jump down 4. Same distance across, so I know it's a reflection. Same height going up, same depth going down, so I know it's a reflection. So the one that it crosses is my line of reflection. So my x is indeed my line of reflection. 
if I stay with the hint, once again, the number that stays the same has to be my um, reflection axis. I notice that my x stays the same on this one. They're both positive 2, where my y's are negative. So my x has to be my axis of reflection. And on number 10, I have positive 1's for my y-axis, where I have opposites on my x, so I know my y has to be my axis of reflection. So a couple to review on then. As we're going through these, once again, if we just plot them, or we can learn where they are with the positive and negatives. But on 11, it says a negative and a negative. So if I go negative, negative, or I learn that all negative, negatives are going to be quadrant 3, I would go backwards, and then I would jump down. It does give me quadrant 3. In the same way, reflection diagonally there would be all positive, positives. And all positive and positive, positives are always quadrant 1, because we always run forward, and then we jump up. So it is quadrant one. You do 13 and 14. So if you didn't have enough time, go ahead and pause it while you finish those two. If you didn't, or if you are finished, then if I look at these and I have a negative positive, negative in the X always tells me to run backwards. Positive in the Y always tells me to jump up. So going backwards and jumping up will always take me to quadrant two. And on 14, I'm going forward because it's a positive X. So if I run forward and then I jump down because my Y is a negative, then I'm always going to be in quadrant four. Next set. So the two points are reflections of each other across the X or the Y axis. Identify the axis. So notice I put my hand up there again. Remember, if it is, you know, the stubborn child that's staying in its location, that is going to be my axis of reflection. So when I look at these on 15, is my X the same on both? Or is my Y the same on both? Which one's staying? Well, that would be my negative 9 well, because my 10s and my y-axis are opposites. So I know that my x-axis has to be my axis of reflection. On 16, I notice that in my x-axis I have two positives, where in my y's I have opposites. Same digits, both positive, tells me that that's the stubborn child. It's going to be my axis of reflection. So which one is the axis of reflection for number 17? So hopefully you notice that on the y axis, they are the same number because they are both negative to where my opposites are on the x. So you wrote down that my y was my axis of reflection. On this last set then, now they try to trick you a little bit and they're telling you that they want you to give the reflection ordered pair. So I know I have to remember how to write an ordered pair. Remember it's two numbers. X is always first. Y is always second. In parentheses, separated by a comma. And then when it's telling me it's a reflection, I know that the reflection axis is the one that stays the same. So if I know that my Y has to stay the same, then in my reflection point, it has to have a negative seven for my y. So then we're just talking about opposites. And opposites is, if it's a positive, it's the same thing, but on, as a negative. If it's a negative, then it's the same thing, but as a positive. So my opposite of negative seven would be positive seven. So I know that my reflection point would be seven, negative seven, because it's going to cross the x-axis, or excuse me, the y-axis. On 19 is the x-axis, and I know that it has to be my reflection axis, so it has to stay the same. 
So when I write it out, I know I'm going to keep my negative 15 as my x axis. My opposite then, my y, has to be negative 18 because the first one is positive. So I would have an ordered pair of negative 15, negative 18 as my point of reflection to this point here. You do number 20. So hopefully on number 20, you thought that my x-axis is my point of reflection, then I know my x-axis has to be the one that stays the same. So my first number has to be a positive 11 also. And therefore my y has to be my opposite so that it's a reflection. So my y has to be a negative 9. So it's positive 11, negative 9. So remember as you're going through these that the x is always first, the y is always second. That it has to be a run before a jump. That I have my quadrants 1 for positive positive, 2 for negative positives, three for negative negatives, four for positive negatives. That a reflection is going to cross either the x-axis or it's going to cross the y-axis and be opposite from one another. And whichever axis that it crosses, that is my line of reflection that always stays the same. If you have questions while you're working on your homework, please come and ask. If not, look at my board and figure out what problems you're supposed to do.